It has come a bit late in the day, but in spite of the wait, the Mercedes-Benz GLK has a good chance to succeed. There's the tough G model, the luxurious GL, the classic ML, and now Mercedes opens up another four-wheel drive class. And it's an entry in the much-vaunted compact SUV category, the hottest current trend. GLK? The G recalls the first of the Mercedes off-roaders. The L stands for luxury. And in German, the word compact is spelled with a K. It still has the upright radiator grille. The boxy wheel arches are a carryover from its tough siblings. But the GLK is nevertheless the smallest and sweetest with its premium design credentials. At an overall length of 4.53 meters, it is 4 centimeters shorter than an X3 and 10 less than the Audi. The off-road version of the GLK 350 comes without reduction gearing and pneumatic suspension, but performs surprisingly well in tough terrain. The body is two centimeters higher off the ground, and there's a protective shield underneath. Off-road tires on 17-inch rims are of higher diameter. The 20 centimeters of ground clearance may not sound like much, but rivals are not significantly better in this regard. Decisive is the off-road driving program. The fuel uptake is gentler and the ESP regulates for off-road tours. The electronic traction system 4 ETS breaks the wheels with less grip and sends the power to those who can use it on firmer ground. For an SUV, this functions amazingly well, certainly better than in competing models. In situations demanding axle flexibility, the GLK is equal to the trickiest situations with one wheel hanging in the air, for example. Important in this regard is the rigidity of the vehicle body and the electronic aids, and all this without reduction gearing or differential block. Not bad. The gradient attack angle is 23 degrees at the front and 25 at the back, enough to deal with steep descents without grazes. There's a downhill assist which helpfully cuts in, and it can be programmed for a given speed too. One niggle, though. Water crossings demand caution. A depth of more than 30 centimeters is a problem. More might be expected for Mercedes-Benz in this regard. In general, the GLK is a well-rounded off-road SUV, thanks to years of development and comprehensive testing in the extremes of desert and ice field, all with the goal of delivering a car which could be competitive in this class. Namibia. Namibia is for us an important part of our development program on account of the high temperatures here. We can get here a ground temperature of up to 70 degrees. The vehicle needs to be heat insulated. Carefully planned airflow prevents the motor and other important components from overheating. Also part of the program, low temperature testing. Here in the Arctic, winter road conditions can change in split seconds from snow to ice to tarred roadway. This is quite a challenge for our systems to make the needed adjustments in such a way that the driver hardly notices and the process is harmonious. The developers chose the most extreme conditions to test the GLK. On a 20 degree gradient, the right side of the vehicle was on bare ice and it was always amazing to see how the ETS gave the traction needed. The traction assist was just as relevant in Namibia. Here on this rocky stretch we are checking the ETS traction system. This terrain is ideal for the purpose due to the extreme landscape. Then the GLK is confronted by a formidable ledge. Now it's about raw power and perfectly adjusted electronic assistance. And even here the GLK is undaunted. Now 
back to icy cold Sweden. If the driver meets up with a sudden change of surface and the vehicle threatens to break away, then the ESP cuts in and gets him back on course. From the Swedish north to Namibia again. We drive turns like this, for example, you could find an ostrich standing right there on the perfect line. You can't stay with the perfect line, you'll need to detour around that ostrich, and that means a change of track. What counts too is highway performance. The GLK 350s, six cylinders, have 3.5 liters displacement, 272 horsepower, and 350 newton meters of torque. The 0 to 100 time is 6.7 seconds, and a top speed of 230 kilometers per hour can be reached. All good values on paper, but for the true Mercedes fan, not that impressive. There are four motorization packages available, and all have seven-step automatic transmission and permanent all-wheel drive. The motorization alternatives are not particularly innovative. Look in vain for a direct injection power plant, or a double-clutch transmission, or a start-stop automatic. But nevertheless, the driving feeling in a GLK is excellent. The new model is comfortable and not sloppy. It's well balanced and in spite of a higher center of gravity, it remains very dynamic. Even tight corners can be negotiated without undue sway and on well-maintained roads, the four-wheeler rides as sweetly as a limousine. The interior tries for the best of both worlds, the off-road action and the limousine comfort. But there is little new here. All is spacious, conservative and of irreproachable quality and just a bit boring. But this could well be what the customers want. The cockpit is utilitarian, the instruments are well in view, although with superfluous decorative flourishes. Otherwise, there are electrically controlled leather seats and in the back, the kids are not deprived of their favorite television shows. While Mercedes has positioned its GLK as a nippy climber, Audi is on the overtaking lane with its Q7 as clearly the most sporty of the SUVs. But remember, the Audi is 10 centimeters longer than the rival with the three-pointed star. Here, there's a petrol engine and two diesels on offer, all with direct injection and turbo boost. Power, 211 horsepower. The sprint to 100 in 7.2 seconds. Top speed, 222 kilometers an hour. Fuel consumption, just 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers. But the Q5 has disadvantages off-road. It's just not quite up to it, in spite of an electronic downhill assist and a special ESP off-road mode. Audi's adventurers can have an off-road package which gives added body protection underneath. But like most of the contenders, reduction gearing and differential blocking are conspicuous by their absence. The price of the Q5i basic model is 2,000 euros less than that of a comparable GLK. Announced for February 2009 is an entry model, the GLK 220 CDI set to cost at least 40,340 euros. And the modestly equipped GLK 350, the top version, is the most expensive in the segment at 46,000 euros. Leaving aside the usual question of whether SUVs actually make any kind of sense at all, it must be said that the Mercedes GLK is an automobile with many-sided attributes. It's comfortable, but at the same time, amazingly fleet of foot. Off-road, the GLK is far ahead of its rivals. Whether in among sand dunes or on stony trails, the GLK cuts a good figure. Sad that we'll have to wait until 2009 for a four-cylinder diesel, but we should get used to seeing the new GLK not just in the gravel quarry, but also rolling up at the theater or opera house.